All right, this is lesson 13, and I am going to introduce you to the switch statement. The switch statement allows you to condense code that would normally look like this with if, else, if, else, if, else, if. Let's just go through this and see how I would have written it if I didn't know about switch, it would have looked like this. I've got some sort of level, maybe it's a water level, maybe it's a skill level, I don't know. And I'm going to set this message variable based on that. So if the level equals zero, I'll set the message to empty. If it's one or two, remember both of those, either of those, excuse me, it's an or, either of those could be true for this to pass. It will be low, three is a medium, else if level is four, it's high, you get the idea. Five is full, and then I have an, a final else down here to catch it if it's something else. Maybe it's minus three, okay? I have a catch all else that says, uh-oh, and if I run that, Given the value five, it will say status is full. If I run it with a different value, say maybe minus five, it will say, uh-oh. And of course, you can play around with this all you like. Script is available on the GitHub repo right there. You can see that. Go get lesson 13. There's two scripts. One is this one, and I encourage you, download it, try it, make sure it works the way you expect. And then there's the other one, the shortcut method that I will get from script number two. This introduces us to the switch statement and does almost the same thing as all of that other, but I did introduce a little bit of bug that I wanna, uh, a logic bug that I wanna tell you about. So the syntax of a switch statement is right here. It starts out with switch some variable. Let's take one of these cases based on the value of this variable. And it will continue to run that case until it hits a break statement. We get to break in another case when we do looping. So I've got switch break variable. So I've got my level set to five and I've got my message set to nothing at this point. So it says switch on level. Again, curly braces are important here. There's a case and the case runs until it hits a break. So. It looks like, wow, Chuck, this doesn't really save me any time, any, uh, any, any typing, but it makes it a whole lot clearer to read. I can see this is case zero. Note, this is an integer variable and this is an integer value. So my values match the type. I can only use the simple primitive data types of strings and numbers in here. So that's where they have their value. If I want a number, a, a set of different string values, I would enclose them in single quotes. So if I was actually looking at maybe what's the message, then I would have you know, empty, full, that kind of thing in here. So I would put string values in my cases. I'm not doing that, so I won't do that. The next case says, case one is, whoa, there's nothing there. That doesn't mean nothing will happen for one. It just means one and two have the same outcome. It's going to fall through until it hits a break statement and that ejects it from the switch. So case one starts running, it goes, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna keep falling through and hit another label case two, it's low. Remember one or two was a low value in our uh, if el else if statement before. So this does logically the same thing and I can easily tell, hey, one and two do the same thing here. Now, three, <laughs> what's wrong with this? It's going to fall through. There's no break statement. So if I run three, it's going to set the variable message to medium and then fall through to four and reset it to high. I will never get a medium. You can look at code like this all day and go, why isn't it working? And if you don't remember your simple case uh, switch statement, you're going to forget break. Now again, here I wanted it to fall through, here I did not. It would have just overwrote my message variable and that would be bad. So there's three, four, and five, and my final else gets turned into a default. That's a keyword. So the keywords you wanna be familiar with are switch, break, case, and default. Not necessarily in that order. Switch, case, break, and default. That would work. Default doesn't need a break because it has nothing left to fall through to, but there's my uh-oh message. And again, if I run this, I get some interesting statistics, but ultimately here is my script output with the three asterisks and a script, level is five, status is full. Go back up here, change it to something else. 
Let's make sure that my three actually worked. I suppose you want to see it with that broken status. There's medium, but if I had forgotten the break statement here and it looked like it did before, it will say hi. You go, well, three's not high. It's because you forgot the break statement. So that is the switch statement. It's used quite a bit. You're used to it. I often find myself gravitating towards a switch statement when I have at least one else if. If I have an if and an else, it pretty much stands to reason that it's going to be one case or the other. And the switch really doesn't buy me much. But it really, really helps if I've got a finite set of things I'm checking for, like this, where I want five different levels, and check for a parameter that's out of bounds. That default can grab that and say, uh-oh, why is the level not between zero and five? That's not good. You can do some error proofing in your code now. Yes, you could do this with an else if, if else, and, and you know, that, that big long construct that I showed you before, but it gets a little harder to maintain when somebody says, hey, can we put in a six? Where, where does six go? You, know, you it, it, these numbers don't even need to be in order. It just, I think this is a cleaner, easier to read method. And if I start using else if, I usually jump to a switch statement first. But again, be sure you are using an integer or a string in this value because you may not always get that. You may get an object sometimes from a field or a property in ServiceNow. And we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get into objects more. But you may have to take out your two string or your parse int toolbox that I showed you earlier in order to convert that into something before you use it in the switch. If you're not sure, you can always do something like var level equals parse int of whatever it was, some other variable, result, or, or, or something like that. That is a terrible way to spell result. <laughs> But like that, that would make sure that level is in fact a number. So be on the watch for that. Join me in the next video as we talk a little bit more about these truthy falsies that I that I hinted at before. When when does this condition evaluate to true and when is it false? And how can I be sure I've got what I need? So I will see you in that real soon. Join me for lesson 14. Till then.